World War they prepared and you know when they when they invaded Normandy and the soldiers were right it, there was a preparation and I sort of feel the Lord saying there's been a preparation in heaven of my body in the nation and in Europe hallelujah and there's an inevitability of what's going to happen says the Lord hallelujah oh we thank you Lord we thank you Lord that there's a shout from heaven Oh, it's a shout of victory. They're singing. They're singing in heaven. Hallelujah. And rejoicing. <clears throat> because I feel the Lord saying, it's getting in place my body to take this great harvest for the push across the nation, for a push across Europe. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. This, it's the day of the sons of God arising. It's the day of everything you've been in place, says the Lord. It's a time when I have trained my people, 
when I have put something in their hearts and I want you to know that it's about to spring forth I want you to know that darkness can't hold out against my plan says the Lord hallelujah 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 let the lion roar hallelujah oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh we praise you Lord oh we praise you Lord let the lion roar thank you Lord oh thank you Lord Jesus This time prophetically, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let the song of the Lord go forth. Wheels within wheels. I could see like wheels, um, wheels within wheels of fire, and they, um, like a clock, they uh, uh, inter interlocked, you know, and the whole system was just on fire and as we worshiped there I could see the angels and the fire and the glory and the glory and the glory falling the f glory falling and uh, things falling into place and things clicking in together like wheels upon wheels fitting into one another fitting into one another fitting into one another the inevitability of the timing the timing hallelujah thank you Lord we thank you Lord that as we worship you we give you glory and praise your kingdom come your will be done your kingdom is coming and your will is being done we declare it and we receive it we declare it and we receive it the fire of the Lord the fire of the Holy Ghost coming upon the whole earth as the timing set in place with the cogs in the wheel of the clock coming into place we thank you Lord hallelujah we thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh thank you Lord hallelujah oh when the saints oh when the saints go marching in to be in that number when the saints go marching in when the saints go marching in Is 
I believe the word of God for you is just think of who you were when I first called you. Just think of who you were when I first called you. None of you were great. None of you were great, but I have chosen you. I have chosen you to be a warrior. I have chosen you to carry my presence, to carry my glory. Hallelujah. And right now, I believe that God is raising each one of us to find and dig treasures. And I encourage everyone not to stop digging. Keep digging. Keep digging until that water will gush forth. Hallelujah. And God is looking for people who are ready to surrender everything just to get that precious pearl just to get that precious treasure and God has hidden it for other people but he has revealed it to you he has revealed it to you hallelujah thank you Lord you are holy you are holy God can you hear the sound of heaven it's a sound of many waters it's the sound of worship coming from His throne. There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make His glory known Singing Holy, holy, holy are You, Lord Holy, holy, holy are You The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We will never get tired of singing holy to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Along with the angels, we worship you. We lift up our voices. Holy, holy, holy are you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it's just been special tonight. Hallelujah. Just a, few, just a couple of more things we'll do, and then we'll have Noel minister to us. Hallelujah. I did an outreach in 1985 in the Spa Hotel. It was a very, particularly, very difficult one. And a um, lot of opposition. But Gay Kennedy gave her life to Christ that night. <laughs> and she brought an awful lot of people to the Lord afterwards, including PJ and, and Liz Booth, actually. And there was a leader from St. Mark's in the pub that night, and he heard the music. I can't think of his name. He's in Tala. He was one of the leaders in St. Mark's. And... Um, he gave his life to Christ that night, uh, came into the meeting. So, and there's a few stories, I just felt uh, a few stories um, 
There was a girl doing outreach in, in, uh, in the Far East. And it was very hard going those days. And she was going from house to house. But she felt to go to this house and the woman said, yes, my son is dying. He'd got TB. And um, so she went in and she prayed for him. And he got healed and he gave his life to Christ. That turned out to be Paul Young Gi Cho. Yeah. So, wow, I mean, little success. Um, I mean, we all know the story of Billy Graham, but it's good to remind ourselves. They did three weeks of outreach in a crusade with very little success. And one 14-year-old boy came to Christ. It turned out to be Billy Graham. And God, I don't know, it, it, it happens. And, um, and just one other one was, um, like Reinhard Bonnke belonged to a, I'm just reading his book at the moment, because it's very fresh in my mind about the war and the Russians. And, uh, and like he was only four years of age when they were trying to bomb the refugees uh, um, as they made, tried to make their way to safety. And, um, and he, he came out of that and his father led a church and it never went beyond 50 people. And my goodness, the impact of that ministry has just been amazing. But um, I'm just going to take a testimony for a moment, but I just want to introduce Noel and then we'll, uh, uh, before I do, but I just was with Noel there a few weeks ago. And you know, it just activated in me sharing the Lord with people afterwards, Noel. I just had a great run. And there, sometimes we hit a wall and I just know Noel is going to activate something tonight in us, glory to God. But I just want, um, share a miracle that happened in the hospital when, when you did the, it was a woman who got a bad report. It's just a very gripping and I think it's good to refresh ourselves with the testimonies of victory and maybe tell the story about the woman who was, was in the home that she was good for the people stirred up The one with the coma like, Hallelujah to them together. Hallelujah Hallelujah Our God is a miracle working God Amen, Hallelujah uh, he just answered even a simple prayer, not a big, you know, that he wanted a big, long prayer, it, which I learned and it made me, cued me uh, to minister to people after John Tillich's ministry especially. I was being acute. So this time, um, uh, last year, yeah, one of the lady who was a phlebotomy, she was going through a lot of stress um, in her personal life. Uh, lots uh, of stress. So one day I was in my office, uh, doing my things in the office, and she just approached me and said, uh, uh, do you pray? I see that you pray. And I said, um, Yes, I do pray. Um, I don't know who you believe, and uh, I, I sense that he prays. So um, she came and we talked about and uh, talked about the faith upon Jesus. And uh, then after some time, her uh, eyes rolled with the tears. Then I asked her, is that everything okay? And she then started to share that. Um, she has uh, no child for a long time and uh, that she has this um, uh, she went to the GP and the G uh, GP suspected a, a cancer fibroid kind of uh, mm, that was already detected in one of the tests so they wanted to go uh, send her for another scan in St. James's and the day she was talking to me and she said I'm going to go for another scan I don't know what it's going to be. I'm eager to get a child as well after, and this is what the report. And then I just said, I closed the office and said, come inside, because she was also busy doing the bloods for the patients. I said, okay, let's pray right now. And just held her hands together and we prayed in Jesus' name. Let her be healed. What ever be healed and then we prayed such a glorious i can see on her face she went home and we get in touch with each other and she said 
all my scan is on this particular day. So that day morning, myself and pastor, we praying. And when we were praying, we held together and we prayed at that time, at the moment she was having the scan, we again prayed and sent the message. And the next minute, the, after she got the result, the joy of her was overflowing, saying there's nothing they could find. There's no cancer. Hallelujah. That was amazing. You know, every time she sees me, she was rejoiced. Whenever she sees, she wanted to come to the church. She's, I think she uh, believes Catholic uh, and, uh, you know, but uh, she just wanted to come to the church. She wanted to experience. I pray that one day she will be here. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and there's one more thing I just wanted to also share, as Pastor wanted me to share that. Um, uh, I work in the stroke unit as a manager there. So there was a patient, was a young patient, was admitted, and uh, she was carrying baby, and she is, one of our sister asked me to go and visit the sister who was admitted um, with the, she was admitted with coma, and she was diagnosed as um, in her, one of her brain artery got in fact, and then she collapsed and completely coma completely cannot do anything. She is actually, all her four limbs, everything was totally not moving. So during that time, when sister asked me to go and pray to that sister, and she was carrying as well at the time, I went to see her. It was such a status. She completely, um, she was out of the coma. She was, but she couldn't move her limbs, nothing, completely stroke. Uh, she was trying to tell me something. No words were coming. No, no words at all. She was like kind of action she was talking to me. I said, do you believe upon Jesus? We just started praying again, a simple prayer. I was going every now and then to visit the sister, holding on to each other. It is in the hospital, it is, it is hard at the time, COVID peak level, that's last year. And it's so hard, but we tried and we were, like I was trying to go and meet the sister every day. Not every day, at least every now and then, went over to her, praying, holding the hands, hugging together. We prayed with a simple prayer, Lord, in your name. And you'll just, the, the change in her life every day, every day, it was just started. She started to talk. The words were coming out as the days went on. She started to move her hands and she started to sit out of the chair and started... The, the miracle happened every minute and she was in you know, one day you'll be a testimony and then she came here and gave the testimony and she was completely recovered and the baby was born health and safe today she is a living testimony I just wanted to tell you how God is, you know, there are times that, you know, that, that acute me, I always say, after having John Dillick's ministry, you know, acute uh, in a prayer, how to just go and authority and just pray, a simple prayer, and that's it, that the Lord did a wonderful miracle in their life. Hallelujah. Let's give the clap offering for our Lord for those two testimonies. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's great joy to welcome Noel, very anointed man of God. I know you're going to be stirred, and I know you're going to see miracles after this tonight. Something will be Amen. Do you want to stay? Do you want to stay? Thanks. Good evening. God is so good, amen? Amen. amen. Hey, Joe. How are you? Yeah, um... Romans 1.11, Paul has a longing to go to the church in Rome. And he doesn't just want to go and be looked after. He says in one, Romans 1.11, he says, I long to go to you, 
so I may bring an impartation of the Spirit, so we may be both mutually built up in faith. And that's my mandate from God. It's not to come with a three-point sermon, but with, to come with something from God that can release movement, was said, in the spiritual realm that activates the church to be the church in a world that is dying and lost, where we see miracles and signs and wonders. And I just pray from the... Oh, it's already here, guys. It's already here. I could have gone... I could have just lay on that floor for the night listening to you. I could have just lay there, God. Jesus says to the disciples, when you go to a house and you find peace, leave your peace there. He talks about adding. Peter, one Peter, add to your faith. Add, add. I just want to add whatever God has in me, on me, to what's already here and in you. That, that we may be mutually built up in faith. So in the name of Jesus, I release spiritual giftings and movements for the mutual building up of our faith so that the King would be glorified in us and through us. And we say, Jesus, all this is for you and to you and through you, Jesus. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord. It says in Romans 3, he says, what's the use of circumcision? What advantage had the Jewish people got? And he goes on to say the advantage that they had was they had the oracles of God. They had the word of God that God wants on his church. They had the prophetic advantage of God's word in them and over them. They were carrying seed of the Messiah to come. What advantage have we got? We have the prophetic word of God. We have the living word of God. But we have the now word of God that can create new tomorrows for people. Amen. Amen. And you know what this says in, in, in Revelations 19 and 10? That the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. So what we've heard already, stories from long ago or stories from this month or this week or this year. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Meaning what Jesus, the testimony that we hear about Jesus means he wants to do it again and again and again and again. That it's not only a yesterday testimony but it's a testimony that activates tomorrow's testimony in each of our lives so when Stephen was talking and when their sister was sharing I'm like yeah Lord I'm not just going to allow that to be a testimony and cheer I'm taking it down as a prophecy that what you see and I'm going to see and what I'm going to share with you you're going to see over and over and over again you know could I get your name Victoria, great name. D.L. Moody was a great evangelist who had such a heart for the poor. Do you know he used to go into cities on, on a, on a it, it was a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday. You know, this guy was famous. He used to put huge tents like arenas in cities and go and preach the gospel. But well, he had such a heart for the poor. And the little street orchards. And he used to have a service just for them. And he went. The church history is weird, isn't it? He went. He was speaking in a Presbyterian church. And he heard the back seats out. Heard. That means he paid. And all these kids would come in. And D.L. Moody would preach the gospel. And his piano player, his worship leader, would play and he'd get up to preach. Oris Sankey was his name. And Oris Sankey would go and sit down and DL would be preaching. And it'd be many times that they'd see Oris Sankey writing or doodling. They were literally saying it was disrespectful. He was preaching the word and he was over there writing like mad. 
And what was happening was, as the gospel was being preached, he was writing the song for the end of the service. And whoever D.L. Moody didn't catch in the net of preaching the gospel, he caught with the gospel song. He was in an atmosphere of movement of the spirit that the Lord was giving him now songs for people in the room. But just like we heard earlier on. And Victoria, I just believe God wants to say, Lord wants to say to you, that listen in the spirit because he's going to give you words. Not songs that will make us famous on, on YouTube, but songs that will open up the spiritual realm. That will see the kingdom of God come. And I just bless you with ears to hear what the Spirit says now. For this meeting, for tomorrow's meeting, for Sunday's meeting that you will hear. When you will doodle in your spirit, you will doodle on, on, on paper. And you will declare. And what's not caught through in the preaching of the word. Or what the preaching of the word opens up. It will be caught in the song of the Lord. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs is the order of the day. It's not just songs, not just psalms, but the spiritual songs. Songs that are caught in the spirit, that opens up things in the spirit. And I got a beautiful um, text this morning out my daughter. I have four daughters and my eldest girl, who myself and Sharon had when we were 16, Patrice. And she heard her husband have a little daughter called Penny, who's 10 years of age. And, you know, as a granddad, you know, like, you know, you know we, what we do, grannies and granddads, if you're not there, yeah, wait. Just wait. I think there's something that God has deposited in us that just clicks when you have them. Because you have your own kids and you love them. But this is another love. This is a generational love. And Penny being my oldest granddaughter, I got this from my mom this morning. It's a little, what would you call it? A certificate. And it says this. Pen license. Congratulations to Penny Duff for earning your pen license. Well done. And I text my daughter, what's that about? She's been learning to write with a fountain pen. And she's passed. It says, congratulations to Penny Duff for earning your pen license. And I feel it's a word for you, Jackie. That you've earned the right to the right to write the things of the Lord. You've earned it. She put in time, little penny put in energy, effort. And the master teacher says, Congratulations, Jackie. You've got your license. And I just pray, Lord, I release that freshness, that, that commendation of God, that affirmation of God, that honoring of God, that you've earned it, Jackie. You don't earn this stuff by selling a million, selling a million records. You earn this stuff by going through the trenches and going through the battles and staying staying fresh and pliable before God, carrying the scars, carrying the pain. But they're your qualifications in the Spirit. It's a fresh anointing of God. Congratulations, Jackie, you've received your pen license. What gives you, a prof what gives you an advantage in the Spirit? The prophetic word over your life. Because when you flow and operate in it, it opens up for other people. I couldn't wait to open my Bible when I had my brother over there talking about the ditches being filled with water. Because then my notes for tonight. I'm like, Jesus, you're so kind to me. <laughs> and it's found in Kings, Second Kings, where... Joram, the son of Ahab, the king of Samaria, and Jehoshaphat were going to war, and they walked for seven days, if you remember it. And they went in seven days, and they didn't get to war, but that means they had to get back, but they hadn't got enough food or water, well, water to get back. I don't know who planned that trip, but I'm sure they were in trouble. And they were going to die. 
And somebody says, Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet who can hear the word of God? And Joram servant said, Elisha, the man of God can hear from God. And they go and get Elisha. Long, it's a great scene. If you just play it out in your head, he comes. There is, you remember Elisha? He was known in this chapter. He says, Elisha, the man who washed the hands of Elijah. If you sow into it, you'll grow into it. Amen. You don't just get it. The man who washed the hands of Elijah. Which means he's the man that's seen Elijah not always get it right. He's the man that's seen Elijah get depressed. But he kept washing his hands. And he comes, he comes, right? It's just so funny. And he sees Joram. You remember who Joram was? Jehoshaphat and Jezebel's kid. Or not Jehoshaphat, Ahab's and Jezebel's kid. And that was Elijah's nemesis. She was the one that put the hit out on him. His hell one, his mother. And he comes and he sees him and he's like, go and get your own prophets. The Baal prophets. And he says, if it wasn't for that man of God, Jehoshaphat, I'd have no time for you. Stephen, thanks for being the man of God. Thanks for being the man of God. He says, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Thank you, Stephen, for the times during my war that you were there. There's times I think I wouldn't be here without men of God like you. He sees beyond and just keeps going. No, I'll keep going for it. And for you to say something in my life stirred you up is like, I've made it. So he says this, get me the worship leader, get me the harpist, get me the musician. And while the music and the worship of God was playing, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he says, dig the ditches, the water is coming. What was the word from the Lord? Keep digging the ditches. Keep putting her in. Because the water came from nowhere. Just came flowing. You read it. It just came flowing from Edom somewhere. It wasn't a river, it wasn't rain, it wasn't a storm. It just came. There was just this suddenly of God that we keep digging. His promises is he will fill the ditches with the water that is needed. And there's an ascendancy. I felt you're in this place. There's an, I haven't been in a meeting like this in a long while, guys. And I'm pastoring a church. Hello. That worship wasn't three songs. That was worship that God inhabits. That's the worship that when they were playing, something of heaven came. The word of the Lord, keep digging. And I felt there was an ascendancy in this place, JC. That's what I felt. There's an ascendancy. There's, there's a going up. There's, a, there's, a, there's like some people. Remember Moses, like he says to Joshua and, and Aaron, and Aaron wasn't there, and, the, and, his, and his servants, he says, you stay here, I'm going on up. Some of us just want to go there. Some of us just want to go to halfway. I, I have enough here. I can see the cloud. I can see the glory, but I don't want to go another. Because that takes effort. That takes energy. Moses was a... 128, 220 year old man. It's like Stephen Mons on his bicycle. The only one that put more miles than Moses is this fella. I really felt that tonight. That the seed is not just heavenly. We're not just seated in a heavenly place, we're seated in heavenly places. That's just places in the spirit that we don't ever have to settle. Well, there's places to go. There's places like 2019, March 2019. Myself and my son-in-law who was, who was leading Liberty Church. We said, what are we going to do? <laughs> like we had some good things going. What are we going to do? And we set our face to seek the Lord. 
He says, Rob, I'll go over to your house. He lives in Neeson. I'll be there at six in the morning. Rob, come over the next day to my house. I'll go over to his house the next morning. My house, his house, or his house, my house. What's this, 2022? Every morning. My house, his house, my house, my house. Still, three years, four years later. Lord, there's more. We have to dig the ditches. We have to keep seeking you, Lord. We have to keep wanting more, Lord. That, like, no matter what we see, there's more. There's places in the spirit. There's places. You know when, the, when, when, the, when Peter was in prison in Acts, you know what the church was found doing? Praying earnestly. What got him out of prison? What released the angel of the Lord? What released the mandate of God? The church was praying Amen. earnestly. Committed to this. That what the miracles that we see, the miracles that's happening is because the church is praying earnestly. That you, we can have all stuff. But if we're not praying earnestly, there's no one getting out of prisons. Nobody. I believe some of the prophetic edge that God wants to put on his church coupled with the word of knowledge is a key to evangelism we've never even fully experienced yet where do we find these things earnestly praying seeking his face some people say everything will be all right you get Facebook people putting on you know things are going to change for you how are they going to change what is it going to cost us to put in to see that change? We've been praying. I just lived down the road and we've been praying here three years, five mornings a week. After that, a Bible study, breaking bread, prophesying over Bally Fairman, because this is where I live, prophesying over the city. But when you're in the immediate, and during this lockdown, people, pastors, and like this and that, I'm like, I'm telling you, I've seen more in these lockdown years than I've seen before that. I've been in more houses in Ballyferma where I'm not from. So I don't really know people, but I know a lot of people now. Amen. We've been praying. It's like we pray for people, right? And we're in space of time. Sometimes a month, sometimes a week, sometimes a year. But you pray. There's nothing more empowering to the church and to the new believers that pray with me. When we're prophesying, cancelling suicide over this place. Yeah. Cancelling early debts, accidental debts. There's nothing more empowering at six in the morning when there's a group of people. And you know what? I've, I've a, my daughter and a husband and my granddaughter lives upstairs. My wife is upstairs. My other daughter lives there. Not once have they ever been woken up and we don't hold back. <laughs> Never once, Dad, will you ever be quiet six in the morning? Cancelling now. Why? Because... We're not just praying from earth to heaven. We're seated in heavenly places and we're praying from a place of ascendancy into the earth, into the earth. We fill that space. That's what we're called to do. We're called to fill that space that we occupy. And there's weeks and months where it's just absolutely, what would you say? Persevering. You know, it's a great in the spring mornings, the birds are whistling. You up have quarter five or something there to wake. It's great those mornings, bright in the morning. See the depths of winter. Or even the devil doesn't come out. Persevere. And you'll see the ditches being filled. You will see your family. You will see your community. You will see the kingdom come. And all these testimonies are a small prophecy of what's to come in a deluge. In a deluge. And in that place of prayer, the amount of times the Lord has showed me, heavenly places, heavenly places. I woke up one morning singing that, um, I'll think of his name in a minute, he plays the piano with long hair. Heavenly places, he sings. Heavenly places. And he keeps just singing that heavenly place. I woke up and I'm singing it when I wake up. God wants us. He gave me a picture of us going up into an attic. I was like, what's up there, Lord? He goes, no, I'm calling you up. I want the church to come up. I don't want you to be under. I want you to be over. I don't want you to be singing to heaven. I want you to hear what heaven is singing into the earth. 
And sometimes, I want to tell you, sometimes it's just perseverance. When you do it in the private, God will give you a place in the public. He will. He'll give you the place on the corner. He'll give you the mandates to go and pray outside houses and places and doll errands. He'll give you them. Because you can trust you're going to come back to be on your knees. He'll fill the ditches. There's a man that we've been praying for. I'm glad you heard his testimony somewhere else, Jackie. But a man, if I said his name, you'd know him. In this, well, if you're from this community, everybody knows him. And over in, we've been praying for him. We were trying to get him into a, a Christian rehab, and it fell true, so we kept praying for him. I never met the man before, never seen him. Young man, 23 or something. His sister had committed suicide. I don't know many years later, two years later, he goes up to the bridge up in, Livy, up in uh, Strawberry Beds. He jumps off the bridge with his friends to kill himself. He goes missing for five minutes under the water. His friends that were with him couldn't find him. His shoes popped up, everything. They find him five minutes down the bank, sitting on the bank. They said, how did you get out of the water? He said, a light came from heaven and took me up out of the water I've heard this from his mouth next day he's sitting in my house on my sofa at 6 in the morning praying with us he was getting down to Remar in Tipperary Christian Rehab and uh, he says I gave me life to the Lord I heard in evangelism I gave me life to the Lord and he says, the same light that took me out of water came down upon me when I gave my life to Jesus. And he made the connect that it was God, it was Jesus the Savior. Amen. You see, when he went to church and his girl is there, and his little set of twins, 18 months, and now they're lifting their hands up to worship Jesus. Stephen met a man, he told me after this, he met a man who owns the land. And he has to open the gate to let the police or the ambulance in when people jump off that. And the man says, no one's ever survived that. But Peter did. Why? Because the church was earnestly praying. And what we touched in the spirit was now sitting on my sofa in the flesh. Because when you touch it there, you see it here. And God wants to give his church, those who will seek him, that advantage. We say, people say, no, pastors say, no, you have a hundred testimonies. How? Well, you think I have a hundred testimonies? See what that Joe fella. Because that's the advantage God gives people. His people. Over the psychics. Over the strongholds. Over the demonic. Over history. Over generational stuff. He gives us the advantage. Why? Because he wants to see them saved. Tell me this, sorry. Peter went by because the spot where that happened to his sister has flowers on it. Every day he went by there. He said, Lord, all of his family, mom and dad. The prophetic edge, coupled with the word of knowledge. What's the word of knowledge? It gives, it's a word now that no one else knows, only you and God. But it opens you up to a prophecy about your future. Something that God knows about your now or your yesterday, but it opens you up into the future. We used to, before the COVID, we had a great thing going. We used to go down to Thomas Street and Meat Street, a few of us. We'd meet to pray and worship. No good going out there without worship. Get the harpist and you'll get the word. We used to be in a church in Thomas Street. We'd pray. We'd write down, Lord, give us names. I had a friend in America that knows another guy who the Lord gave him a phone number. And he rang the phone number, and it was the private number of, a, of a, a, a senator up in Washington. And the senator was saying, how did you get my number? This is my private number. He says, here's the word of the Lord. And he listened. And he heard. i oh, like, Lord, I want phone numbers. So if you ask, you'll receive. Lord, can I see something that I know nothing about, but when I see that somebody that that's for, that you'll give me things for them. How do you get this stuff, you ask? You ask, and you shall receive. 
So we'd meet together, Lord, give us something. And one of our girls, one of our women in the church, she, there used to be about six of us and some people from another church. And uh, she says, we'd write, we always had books and we'd write down anything the Lord gave us and time, date, names, colors of jumpers or hairdos or football, jer- like you just write it down, time, date. So if you meet the person, you can say, look at this. So she had a word for this man called Roberto. He was dark hair, beard, green jacket, pair of jeans and brown shoes. And there's something wrong with the left hand side of his body. So myself and Owen Eastlip, if anyone knows Owen, we went down that way. And Adele and Lisa went another way and another team went that way. So we, we tell each other the information because we might see the person and we ring, yeah, get down here. So we come all the way around me and Owen, we come up Meat Street and we hear this commotion outside a pub called The Fountain. But it wasn't an argument, it was like a commotion that you could imagine. Well, I know now, it was the commotion that you'd see in the Bible when Jesus was moving. There's all things going on and I'm walking up and I see one of our girls, no, over here, over here. And as I'm walking over, there's a, a guy there and he jumps out and he says, you're my cousin. And I'm like, am I? And he goes, but I'm an atheist. And, and that was adding to the commotion. There was another man shouting now, you wouldn't believe that girl told him everything about himself. And she hasn't written the book. And he's this, and that's happening. The man is there, and Lisa's like, no, and we're walking up. So you can imagine, it was just so beautiful. And he goes over, and there's a man there, and she says, no, meet Roberto. I'm like, you're Roberto? Your name's Roberto? He says, yeah. And I'm like, my goodness. And I says, and then we looked for him. He says, Roberto, where are you from? He says, I'm from Dolphins Bark. He looked foreign, but he talked exactly like me. I says, I'm from Dolphin's Barn. I says, what's your name? He says, my name is Robert. But I know who he was then. You'll remember who he is when I give this detail. Jackie. Adele says, so I, says I, I says to him, I'm Noel Kenny. My nickname, Noel no Kenny. He says, I know you know. We lived in the same block. I couldn't believe it. And Adele says, no, what's important, Roberto? Because she only knows him as Roberto. Everyone else called him Roberto. I never knew him as Roberto. It's just the most important thing is you get right with God. And he stood there on a simmer brain. He had cancer in his lung, in his left-hand side. Wearing a green jacket, blue jeans, and brown beard. Looked like a Brazilian guy. And she leads him in the sinner's prayer. He stood there saying it in the best, poshest actions you could imagine because he wanted to be sincere. I says, can I pray with you? He says, yeah. I says, Robert, what you've done there means all your sins. Every single one of them are forgiven. I said, look at me, you know what I mean? He says, I know what you mean, no. I buried three brothers because of heroin. And he was the first dealer they ever brought her, bought heroin off. All the man like. They were part of a family that were the first people to bring heroin in. That was a Saturday. I go, Lord. Because this guy's telling everybody, she told him everything. It's in her book. Can you imagine when someone went into the pub later on? Yeah, man. You wouldn't believe what happened, Roberto. I'd love it. I'd love it. I should have just sang in the pub. Could have been the best evangelistic event I was at in years. That was Saturday, following Friday. I'm at Roberto's funeral. A stick snatched from the fire. The word of knowledge opened him up to a future that was with God. And I said to his daughter, I know all those kids. I says to his daughter, did you die? tell you about the fountain pub. She says, no. He told everybody. He told everybody the experience he had with God. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. 
that he wants to give you more. He wants to give us these things that we don't limit God. We take every limitation. I was at, we were, my son-in-law was doing training for, for just training us how you hear God and what you do if you hear God. And I was in the, I was two minutes late into the room because I was in the office next door. I came in and he, all I heard was, now we're going to wait and worship and we're going to get things from God and you're going to write them down. Don't dismiss anything. Don't dismiss anything because God is so creative. It's incredible. But I didn't hear them saying it was for the people in the room. I just heard God's going to give you things for people. So I'm sitting there. I have a vision of an ear. An ear. What was special about this ear? I had a black earring in that young, young people are wearing. You see them, the big black yokes, right? So I'm sitting there and I goes, okay, Lord, what do you want to say? So I wrote down the time and the date. The person that owns this ear, they're Tell them, I've heard every prayer they've ever prayed since they were a little boy. And that one day that ear is going to hear God call them. So I wrote it down, timed and dated. And I drew an ear. And I drew the earring in the ear. And I'm a brutal drawer. So I looked there and I went, oh Lord, that's a brutal ear. So I drew another ear. Now I had a pair of ears. <laughs> right? So me and my son a lot after we're going home and we had a few things for people in the room and, and they had things. We were, it was just movement in the spirit. And me and Greg is driving home. We were going to stop at McDonald's on the Coilmore Road for a coffee and, and then head up to the house. And we're coming up crumb and I says, Greg, go into the Costa there. Costa is nice, I copy. We go in. I says, go in there. We go now. We give the order. I'm standing there and I look around. There's a young, a young boy, a young boy, a young teenager, like 17, 80, there, another one there and a girl there. I looks at the guy. He had two earrings in, in his ears. Them earrings. So I ran out to the car to get me, me piece of paper that I drew them on and the date and the time and, and the word of the Lord. And, and I, I was like, you know, from that car to here, back in, it was like this, it was only about a minute, but it was like a war happening. You can't just go in and say to someone, what are you going to say to them now? Like all of this thing, how are you going to even introduce this? Is, and I, you know, it was all woken up in me. And I, I didn't even hesitate, I walked over, I threw the piece of paper on the, on the table and I says, I day your ears. <laughs> and he looks and they were his ears. <laughs> and and, and uh, I says, look, okay, what's your name? His name was Caleb. I says, Caleb, listen, look what I wrote. Look at him. I told him I was a praying man. I was a Christian man. I says, look what I wrote. I said, sometimes God gives me things for people. They're your ears. And the young one went, wow, that's amazing. It was like an amen from horn. I'm like, well, now we're in and out. There's no agreement here. I says, Caleb, God heard every prayer you've ever prayed. And you're going to hear God's voice in those same ears. He starts choking. I don't know. I just said, look, I, I don't know what to, no, didn't know what to do. All I said was, you're on God's heart, brother. I don't know. I'm always looking at people when I see those ears. It's that that young Caleb, man. Bro, opens people up. Opens people up to see the glory of God. To experience heaven. To see life's transformed. And this is the advantage that God wants to give. This puts another edge on evangelism. This gives people a taste to see that God is good. Yeah. And when they taste that God is good, they want more. Yes. If God knows that about me and would still tell me he loves me, why would I not give my heart to this God? And it's not just coming in with the knowledge of the truth of the gospel. It's coming in with an experience of the gospel. Because you go home and if your mother is a Mormon, she could rob the truth of the gospel. But she can't rob an experience. See, God is ahead of the enemy. Anything can be disputed, but you can't dispute that someone knew your name and drew your ears and described your clothing and knew that you were sick. And you can't deny that. No one in the pub could deny that with Robert. Lastly. Make sure I've got everything out. Yeah. I prayed with a woman that had cancer. I walked her through 
to her deathbed, to her death. Every Monday, on my day off, myself, my wife would drive up to County Mead. And I'd pray for healing. I'd do everything that I knew. Fasted, prayed. And yet somehow in my spirit, I knew this wasn't going to happen. I don't know why. I remember one day driving and I said, Lord, you know what? I hate this. I just don't like doing this, Lord. I want to see her dancing. I want to see her up. And the Holy Spirit says to me, no, I'm giving you the privilege of walking someone to heaven. Don't miss it. And everything changed. Was, I fe- was that a defeatist thing? No, heaven is not a punishment. Heaven is a reward. And I'm like, okay, Lord, that changes everything. I used to go and she was a gas woman. And I'd sit in the bedroom where and I'd read through the scriptures. And we'd talk about our family and, you know, you can imagine. Everything is so real at that moment. I remember one day me and Sarah went down and he says, uh, No, come on, man, I need a, I need a bit of heaven. I need a bit. And we, we talked about heaven, deep things of God and life. And she says, No, let me ask you one question. She's a funny woman. I says, What is that? She says, What's the name of that perfume you're wearing? <laughs> stick snatched from the fire and sometimes we get the privilege of leading people to Jesus and knowing that that destiny is secured is that not the greatest privilege do we want to see miracles absolutely we contend for them but no one's content for these things more than this man Nobody, no one I know. And the ditches are being dug and we will see them filled. We will see them filled. The glory of God is more important than that now. More important that people see it, hear it, experience it and go to be in it. Let me finish this. I was up with my daughter's praying one morning seems like I'm always praying. I'm like, well, you aren't always praying. But don't let, don't let that be filled. Don't be filled or think I'm saying that I'm not a human and a man that has to push himself and have to watch my Achilles heels of life, which one of them is usually one of them in my walk is self-pity. Don't think when someone dies when I pray for them that the devil hasn't tormented the life out of me. Where's your God? There's some things you have to settle in your heart. And one of them is, no matter what, I'm a worshipper. You, you settle that in your heart and you come bulletproof in areas. If I'm on the ground, I pull myself up by that. Get in and worship the king. You settle in your heart, God is good. You settle it. You don't have to understand everything in life. Because it stops you like I was. Lord, you let me down. And honestly, the kindness of God, you know what, you know what the kindness of God is to me? He says, no, that's because you have a high expect, expectancy of me. And I honor that. But when you're in it, but when you're in it, and the devil's on you, you have to go back to what you settled in your heart. I don't know, but I'm a worshiper. I don't understand, I don't even agree, but Lord, you're good, I'm wrong. You're right, I'm wrong. And one morning, I just want you to make sure you know that I'm not giving any impression of someone I'm not. But one morning, Sharon, my wife, was in Africa with my son-in-law. And um, there's a great work of God that he's allowed us to be involved in in a place called Azutu in Africa. Building homes and raising up orphan children. And it's been the privilege of our lives, to be honest, to wash feet in a little land that's nearly forgotten. And Sharon was over with Rob, and uh, so I wasn't out and Rob's praying, so I was going up to my daughter's up in Lucan, and um, 
they just moved into a house a couple of weeks prior. So it was brand new, first house. And uh, we were praying and I started praying and I started praying in tongues. And then, do you know that place in tongues where you know the Holy Spirit can take you somewhere else? It's like heavenly places. It's usually, in my experience, it's usually preempt by tongues. And the Holy Spirit takes it. And then it's not the tongues that you use to build yourself up anymore. It's like another tongue. And you know you can go there or you don't have to go there. It's your choice. And that morning I knew it was there. So I went for it. And I started praying in this tongue. And it was the most authoritative tongue you could imagine. Right? Now, I'm not, I'm, not, no, I'm not praying in tongues under my breath now. This is six in the morning. I'm like, there's, a, there's an, an authority that came upon me. And I was speaking. I was speaking something like, and like my daughter was saying that it was dark. I was thinking, them new neighbors, what are they going to be thinking? You know, like the humanity of it all. But I knew and when I stopped, I said to my daughter, have you got the interpretation? There's an interpretation. Have you got the interpretation? And Becky was like, Dad, no, I know there's an interpretation, but I haven't got them. So I said to her husband, Greg, Greg, have you got them? And uh, Greg said, no, I haven't got them. So the Bible says, if they haven't got them, you ask the Lord and you get them. Corinthians. So I said, Lord, what was it? Tell me, Lord, show me the interpretation. And I had a vision, like a nanosecond vision of a wall with writing on it. And I was, I took it was Hebrew writing. And I was like, Lord, what is it? What's the interpretation? Like, what's the interpretation? It was like the tongue, now this vision. What's the interpretation? Lord, what's the interpretation? And a little wind blew by little tiny breeze and I caught a couple of it was like it was on sandstone and I caught a few, you know this was all nanoseconds. new seconds, I'm like saying it longer than it actually was, you know, but, but a little few bits of sand and it went that way and I, I, they caught me and I went that way and I looked back and now the writing was what I could read, English and I told my friend and I said to him he says, no, see the wind blowing the sand he said, there's an old season going What's on the wall is the new seas. And I looks at the wall and it says, the glory of God is coming. And I'm like, the glory of God is coming. The glory of God is coming. The glory of God is coming. The glory of God. And the same authority that I was speaking in tongues, I was now speaking and declaring and releasing in the earth. And I just want to tell you, I don't know where it's going to break out or when it's going to break out, but all I want to know is I want to be at the races that is somewhere where we are. And I want to tell you, when I was here tonight and the ascendancy was the ascendancy into the glory of God. And I felt it in this place tonight. And I want to tell you, it's the first place I felt it since I had it. And it's here, and it's in you, and it's on you. So go up the mountain, dig the ditches, accept the advantage that God has put on your life prophetically in words of knowledge. So that evangelism, it's not just about declaring the truth, a declaration of the truth, but it's the demonstration of the glory of God that is attached to the truth. We think sometimes I just tell them the gospel and we leave it there without, tell, without allowing them or us stepping into, the, into it to, for them to receive the manifestation of God. That's what changed me. I didn't know what, I didn't know nothing when I got saved. But I knew I got saved. And no amount of discouragement which I had or arguments which was coming my way. Religious people. They could walk rings around me, scripture. I didn't know anything. But I knew that night my sins were forgiven because I experienced a worship of God and the love of God. And we owe them that. The church owes them that. We owe them that. They don't need pointing fingers. You don't mean, need condemnation. You don't need fancy Christianity. You need spirit-filled, power-filled yes. people of God. Amen. And we heard enough tonight through them testimonies to be able to grab them and to be able to say, Lord, you did it there. Do it again. You give all the Sankey songs. Give Victoria songs. 
You give great writers words. Give Jackie words, oh God. Lord, there's people that walk by pubs, Lord, with Roberto's on every corner that's in this room, oh God. Give us words for them, Lord. Give us boldness. Give us, give us the authority, Lord God, to be able to walk through all the arguments that's in our minds, oh God. To be able to reach that person, to snatch, see them snatched. Men and women that's up on balconies and buildings and bridges tonight, Lord. Stir us up to pray, Lord. To take our place in the heavenly places. We're not, when you're in the heavenly place, you're no longer asking God. You're hearing God. And you're speaking God. And God's word in your mouth is as powerful as it's in his mouth. If it's God's word in your mouth. And in heavenly places, we don't say, Lord, please, no suicide, Lord. Save Sue people. We get into that place where we're cancelling it. You're not happening in Ballyferma tonight. Accident led, you're not happening. Overdoses, you're not happening. Salvations, you're happening. People getting snatched from fires, you're happening. People hearing from God and declaring God, you're happening. So Lord, we come before you. Let's stand. I know one of the activation points of impartation the Bible teaches it. it's laying on of hands. It's, it's, that's why we're told not to even do it quickly because it's so powerful. It's a, it's a natural act that God puts his supernatural on to. And I'm a great believer in the body of Christ and that there's only one superstar and it's Jesus. So what I want us to do is to lay hands on one another. So could you move towards someone, put your hand on their shoulder, hold a hand. And we're going to use this point of laying hands on one another as an activation point. And then you're going to receive words for those people. You're going to see visions. You're going to have scriptures. Can I encourage you, don't dismiss anything because you, you might guess something's like, that doesn't even make sense to me. That's because it's not for you. <laughs> but if you take a risk and submit it to the person, making sure you're in, in scriptures parameters of that the ministry of the New Testament is to build up strength and edify, then release it. Lord, I release as already been in this atmosphere, Lord. I release prophetic utterances, the language of the Spirit, dreams, prophecies, and visions into every life. That there's nobody excluded. Who was it for? Acts 2. I pour out my Spirit on all flesh, my sons and daughters. It was a for every son, every daughter. So receive it. Impartation of prophecy, words and knowledge that brings your evangelism to another level in God, in this city. That out of this place of ascendancy, Luke chapter 10, 11, they're up on Mount Transfiguration and they come down from being in the glory of God. But they come down from that ascended place and there's a family with a demon-possessed kid. So the ascendancy is for descendancy to bring what we've got up here out to there. And I release it in the name of Jesus. Power, fire, demonstration, activation, in the name of Jesus, that your worship, which was amazing tonight, that the storing of the Spirit would increase. As we heard, I love that in Ezekiel, wheels move in every direction. All types of commotions and movements in the Spirit. And it says above it all was the Son of Glory, the Son of Man. And the Spirit would move and the wheels would go that way. 
Just release movement, Lord, like never before, JC. Like never before in the name of Jesus. We establish it, Lord. We agree together and establish it as done tonight. New movements. Stephen said it. Stephen said something earlier. He said something like, that was special. Like that was different. <laughs> Increase the different, Lord. Increase the level. Increase the spaces and places in the spirit, Lord God. Increase the giftings and the moving in the giftings, O oh God. Increase, Lord, the anointing of God to do the things of God. The anointing is the enablement, equipping, empowerment of God to do the will of God in your life and through your life. So we receive, Victoria, receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. You know, writing songs is natural because we know how to write. But the anointing brings the super to the natural. You will have words, you will have songs, you will have riffs and tunes. But when God comes upon it in the anointing, you will see the atmosphere shift. Do you want to just play a bit louder, Victoria? We just worship you, Lord. We just worship him and receive for that person, yeah? We just worship you, Lord. We've called the musician. And we worship you, King of Glory. We are here to praise you, Lord. We are here to lift our voice and sing, O oh God. And it is our love flowing from our hearts, O oh God. Oh, hearts and minds that will. We love you, Lord. I sing, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless you, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Release your word, O oh God. Release your word, O oh God. Release your words, O oh God. You release your words. Release words of knowledge, O oh God. Release healings, O oh God. Release the gift of faith, O oh God. Release, O oh God, what's needed, Lord, for the moment, O oh God, for the for the for the for the situation, for the possibilities, O oh God. Release, O oh God. Release, O oh God. We tell everything else, O oh God, to move. Move. So that the King of Glory may come in. Oh, Jesus, increase, oh God, one degree of glory to another. That's your, that's, your, that's your mode of operation, oh God, one degree of glory to another. Hallelujah, Jesus. Salvations, oh God. Lord, evangelism with power, Lord God. Evangelism with power, Lord God. We just release it. As Stephen said, I just kept telling everybody. Lord, I pray, Lord, there's a telling everybody, anointing, Lord, to fall upon us, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We receive it, Lord. Start releasing those words. Start speaking to one another. Start speaking. I seen, I heard, I submit, I give. The Lord said, the Spirit impressed on my heart. All the language of the Spirit. Just speak it to one another. Prophesy it over them. Speak it into them. Call it out of them. Hallelujah. Call out the giftings. Call out the calling of God on the person's life. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Move through your body, Lord. Move through your body, Lord. No exceptions, no exclusions, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes. Yes, Lord. Koda ba 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 ba. Worthy, worthy, worthy. You are worthy, 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 Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy.
Yes. Victoria, you go for it. <laughs> yeah. Good to see people give them words. It's good to see people give them words. If you got something for someone, why don't you just go and give them? If you need someone to pray with you, why don't you just put up your hands so that this, we don't miss anybody? Come on, Victoria. God, holy God, beautiful Savior, wonderful Counselor, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, King of Glory, King of Glory. Spirit of your 